How are we doing this morning? All right, let's go ahead and get started. Um, good morning, and thank you all for coming uh, today. Uh, for those of you that don't know, my name is Steve Anthony. I'm the special agent in charge of the Cleveland FBI. We're joined here by, of course, our U.S. Attorney, Stephen Dettelbach. Uh, both Steve and myself will provide short statements and take a few questions um, about uh, the culmination of an investigation last night. We are also joined here by many representatives, partner agencies in both the Joint Terrorism Task Force and others. Um, we have the Cuyahoga County Sheriff's Office, the Ohio State Patrol, the Fusion Center, Ohio the Cleveland Police Department, Customs and Border Protection, and the Brooksville Police Department. They are all joined up here with us. We're here this morning to announce that last night, members of the FBI's Joint Terrorism Task Force arrested the following individuals. Douglas L. Wright, age 26. Brandon L. Baxter, age 20. Connor C. Stevens, age 20. Joshua S. Stafford, age 23. And Anthony Haney, age 35. The three, Wright, Baxter, and Haney, are accused in a criminal complaint of conspiring, conspiring to use explosive materials to damage physical property, a bridge, affecting interstate commerce. The same charges against the two other co-conspirators are currently being filed. And you have been provided a copy of the current complaint, and you'll also be provided a copy of the complaint that should be filed again, as I said, in the very near future. So just a little bit of background. Uh, beginning in October 2011, the Joint Terrorism Task Force received intelligence that a small number of individuals were intent on conducting violence and destruction of property. These five self-proclaimed anarchists conspired to develop multiple terror plots designed to negatively impact the greater Cleveland metropolitan area. Law enforcement took swift, collaborative action based on this intelligence and undertook a myriad of coordinated and investigative techniques in order to eliminate the risk of violence and protect the public. I want to stress, and we all want to stress up here, that at no time during the course of the investigation was the public ever in danger. The plotting of these individuals continued to evolve and eventually came to be centered on the use of explosives. The co-conspirators considered and researched possible targets and ultimately settled on the plot to damage the Brexville Northfield High Level Bridge, which provides Route 82 passage over the Cuyahoga Valley National Park from Brexville the Sagamore Hills, Ohio. And you can see a picture to me to the left of that very bridge. The individuals explored the illegal purchase of explosives, as well as the concept of using precursor chemicals and internet knowledge to make homemade explosives. They ultimately negotiated with FBI undercover agents and purchased two inert, I say inert, improvised explosive devices, IEDs, which were presented as C4-based remote-activated IEDs. Last night, the co-conspirators placed the two inner IEDs at the base of a concrete support pillar for this Brexville-Northfield high-level bridge and attempted to remotely detonate the devices from a location that they deemed safe and one that would possibly give them an alibi. All five co-conspirators were taken into custody last night by the FBI and JTTF shortly after they attempted to remotely detonate these inert devices. Just want to say real quickly and then turn it over to Steve, uh, the, the, terrorist, the Joint Terrorism Task Force and its partners are working every day to detect, deter, and prevent terrorist acts. Threats of violent terrorism by, uh, motivated by ideological or political views are unacceptable and will be investigated to the fullest as evidenced by this investigation that we're talking to you about today. The FBI's number one priority is to keep the public safe from all known threats while ensuring the integrity of civil liberties and constitutional rights. This investigation demonstrates the commitment and underscores the importance of differentiating between lawful, peaceful exercise of First Amendment rights and the violent, criminal conspiring of a few select individuals who choose to do harm to our community and our nation. Um, and lastly, just want to thank, again, all of our JTTF partners and our other partners represented 
here today, uh, such as the Brexville Police Department. Um, this case would not have been possible, this investigation, without the entire Joint Terrorism Task Force effort. Also want to give special thanks to the National Park Service, Sagamore Hills Police Department, and as I indicated, the Brexville Police Department for their critical coordination and assistance during this case. And of course, um, as I turn it over to Steve, all of this, whether it be a Joint Terrorism Task Force case, whether it be a criminal case, whatever it may be, uh, is not possible, obviously, without the United States Attorney's Office uh, work throughout us uh, during the entire investigation. So I'm going to turn it over to Steve to make a few comments. Thank you, Steve. Thanks, Steve. And I'm Steve Dettelback, the United States Attorney for the Northern District of Ohio. I want to thank you, Steve, uh, and the men and women of the FBI, uh, and also the JTTF, uh, and the men and women of the National Security Unit in the U.S. Attorney's Office, specifically Duncan Brown, who is the assigned assistant on this case, for their hard work and dedication to the protection of our community. Yesterday's arrests demonstrate, again, that protecting our community against acts of terrorism and violence remains the single highest priority of the Department of Justice and the United States Attorney's Office. This case also demonstrates that the threat we face is a diverse one, that terrorism can come in many hues and from many homelands, and that we investigate and we prosecute cases based upon the evidence and the actions of individuals, not rhetoric and illusion of preconceived notions. I want to begin again by stressing that despite the defendant's worst intentions and aims, that during the entire course of yesterday's operation, the public was never in any danger. The defendants never possessed at any time any real explosive material, and their arrest warrants were signed before they got in the car to head to the bridge. The complaint in this case alleges that the defendants took specific and directions to further a terrorist plan. And make no mistake about it, it was their plan. The defendants chose the target that they wished to destroy. The defendants went to the bridge to do recon. The defendants went to a hotel room to purchase what they thought were C4 plastic explosive devices. The defendants went to the bridge last night. The defendants planted the explosives at the base of the bridge. The defendants armed the explosives. The defendants left and went to a remote site, and they then, sitting there, entered the codes that they thought would blow up a bridge with innocent people traveling over it. The defendants in this case stand charged not based on any words or beliefs they might espouse, but based upon their own plans and their own actions. Make no mistake, those who seek to express their views and opinions through expression and demonstration will find the highest level of protection and respect in our laws and in our communities. They deserve and we deserve no less. Those, however, whose views find expression only through acts of destruction and violence will find that that same rule of law is used to protect the community as a whole because it deserves no less. The defendants are in custody and they will appear before a federal magistrate judge uh, today in the courthouse, and that is where the legal process will begin. Uh, so just yeah. The, yeah. Uh, so the, the, just the three suspects that have been charged will appear before the uh, federal. No, all, all five, five, all five at various points during the day. Now we don't control the judges' schedules, but yeah. all five at various points during the day okay. will appear uh, in federal court at various times. My guess is it will start happening in the early afternoon, but that's still a little bit up in up in the air. And when do you expect those pending charges? As we speak, I think okay. I think in the next hour or so, you should be able to get a new complaint uh, that uh, um, has all those things in it. What is the connection between the five suspects? 
how they know each other, basically, and did they reveal during the course of the investigation why they wanted to do this? Um, well, I'm going to stick with the language of the complaint on this. Um, how they know each other or what their connections with is laid out to some degree in the complaint, and there are some statements in the complaint about prior knowledge of each other and, and prior connections. And again, I'm going to stick with the complaint, but they talk about uh, making uh, a statement against corporate America and the government uh, as some of the motivations for their actions. Are they part of yeah. Occupy Cleveland? Well, uh, so let me be very, very clear about this. Um, the FBI and the Department of Justice are not conducting an investigation of any group and have not and will not conduct an investigation of any group. Today's charges should not indicate anything different. This was an investigation of specific, five specific individuals based upon specific actions and predication. They're now charged with specific crimes as alleged in the complaint. And the FBI and the Department of Justice are not and do not investigate movements, we investigate crimes. But do they have a common denominator? Do they all belong to any organized group? The individuals charged in this case, first of all, we don't investigate group membership, but the individuals charged in this case uh, identify themselves as a group of five anarchists, and there are five anarchists who are charged. Steve, do they say why they were going to put smoke bombs by the bank building sign? Uh, uh, I think, again, I'll stick with what's in the complaint. I think there's some language in the complaint about what their motivation was for choosing their various targets. But I'm going to stick with the other two suspects were supposed to be doing at the time? Uh, I didn't st I'm, I'm not, uh, there's five different people in the complaint. There's a bunch of different conversations that are reported. And I don't want to uh, get into remembering who said what and who was present at what meeting. So I'm going to have to stick with the language of the complaint Your on complaint that. Your complaint indicates they were trying to stir up trouble at other events, specifically at this October 21st event. Was that in Occupy Cleveland? Were they showing up at what groups were they showing up I at? will say this that the, the complaint to the extent it talks about others. And it would be very unfair to tar others with the allegations that are made against these five individuals in this complaint. Because to the extent the complaint talks about others, it talks about the anger and frustration that these five individuals felt that other people would not support their violent aims, that other people were aimed at nonviolent means of protest and expression, and that they rejected and were quite frustrated in actually quite blunt terms in the complaint with those feelings. Are they the ones that gave what? you the intelligence that led to Yeah, well, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll answer for Steve on that, that we don't talk about how we why get that intelligence. Bridge? Why, that, why was that the target? Um, Steve, do you want to talk about why they would pick a particular bridge? Well, I, I think that as you read the complaint, say what, what Steve said, is that a lot of the, as you can see, as, as we indicated, the threats, the targets sort of evolved uh, throughout this time period. They researched different, different uh, uh, places, different buildings, different entities, and again, came to the conclusion over much discussion that, that they could probably have in their mind the most impact by uh, targeting, uh, targeting a bridge and in some way uh, impacting commerce or worse. And, uh, and again, that's where they ended up uh, in, 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 uh, in April on deciding that, and that's what they followed through and attempted to do. And, 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 well, I'll say, I want to say one thing about what Steve said, because he's right. You know, it was their choice of target they switched targets several times during the complaint. I don't want to speculate about what goes into somebody's reason why they would choose a building over a bridge, mm -hmm. over a river, over a, over a sign. Uh, but it's, what's laid out in the complaint, I think, does give you enough as to what the evidence shows about their motivation. So one more. Does anybody, do you have a question? Are there expressed objectives to kill people? And number two, is there any effort to, to coincide the, the, the date here to May Day? Uh, and again, I'm going to rest with the complaint because I think the complaint talks about at least one of those two things, and I don't want to go further than the complaint. It talks about the significance of, uh, in their minds, of doing it on certain days that coincide with things in other cities. For TV purposes, can you elaborate on? Well, I'm going to, so uh, I'm going to try to give you as much information, but I really don't, uh, uh, Tom, I don't want to go beyond what's in the complaint on that. What I would say, um, it, it, one question was the Mayday question, but then you had something else about the. Was there ever an expressed objective? We yeah, I think it said, what it says in the complaint, is that as they scouted out the, the uh, recon, the bridge, that uh, they expressed the fact that they believed, or at least some of them believed, that the bridge would fall. Uh, and it also is laid out in the complaint that this is a bridge that has regular amount of traffic on it. This is not, for those of you who live in the Cleveland area, some remote area. This is Route 82 near the interchange of three major interstates. You said last night, rush hour? 
Uh, I think what what time did the it was it was it was no. it was closer to uh, to uh, to nine between nine and ten. Can you okay. describe from a legal standpoint why it was important to basically run the whole thing to the end with them actually typing in? Well, I don't know if I want to get into talk about what's important. I, I do think that that um, that the fact of the matter is is that these defendants, uh, in the as, as charged in the complaint that's before you, uh, made numerous different decisions to act, one after the other after the other. That's uh, one of the reasons that they stand charged here, uh, and that's one of the reasons that uh, the, their conduct uh, evidences their own desire to commit an act of terrorism. So we actually do um, have. Uh, uh, court. Uh, so I want to get back to do that. And this will not be the, and you, you, some of you may also, because you may want to go over at some point. I'm not sure of the date, the times of the different things. And we will get those to you. Um, the one thing is, you, you haven't asked a question yet. So if you have a question, I'll let you ask the last one. Uh, from the remote location, could they see the bridge and what would have happened had the explosives gone off? You mean given our lovely Cleveland weather last night, or <laughs> yeah. so, yeah. Steve? I don't know. If you and could they, yeah. Were there any plans to record it? Do they have like uh, cameras? From where they were located and where they went to detonate it, um, they, they could definitely see the area of the bridge. Whether they could see, given that Steve said the weather, uh, they could see it. I, I think uh, I think would be speculation. But to, to, it was not in great distance from the bridge. And I'm sorry, your second part? Yes. Uh, were there any recording devices? Did they plan to document this in any way? Uh, the investigation didn't indicate that that, 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 that was the case. Yeah, unfortunately, I was going to be, be, be snide. I say, unfortunately, there were recording devices. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so. They didn't expose it the way they did to undercover agents that were being monitored. Do you, would you say they were hell bent on figuring it out? I'm a, I think that that's for your, you. You guys will report it based on the facts. So, do we do have to go? I want to thank you for your time. Um, and, um, and as I said, there's going to be obviously more that happens even today on this. So. Uh, uh, there'll be additional information they just put out.